This is session three, three of three uh, for Rollmaster Retro Sember. This is the last of my um, uh, rose-colored quartz glasses uh, looking back at Rollmaster, uh, a lesson I have learned. Um, and uh, we are going to uh, be finishing out tonight. We're playing with the Slumbering Earthshine Dunes, which is a point crawl. We're playing with a very streamlined, streamlined dummy down uh, version of Rollmaster crit charts and things like that. Um, uh, and especially the spell casting stuff we've we've kind of narrowed down. Anyway, uh, uh, tonight we're going to be finishing out. Uh, we play till about 10.30 Eastern time. Uh, we will take a break at the midpoint. And I would like to take the last 10.15 to do Roses and Thorns um, uh, if we have a time. We'll go to we get to a good stopping point. Uh, that might be success. It might be failure. Um, uh, I killed somebody on Sunday, but they had a hero point left. Uh, so uh, I cut off their head, uh, but they managed to save themselves. So that's the beauty of Rollmaster. The expression on their face, though, when I told them they were dead was priceless. Um, so let's talk about our three characters who have been wandering through the slumbering Ursine Dunes. And uh, we're going to get the 30-second pitch from them. And then I'm going to set the stage where we're at, and then we're going to talk about our, our new character uh, who is entering in. So uh, can you tell us about Beltru, Sherry? Ah, Beltru is a monk, um, and she has a Gaius. Um, she cannot touch coin, but she will do any kind of um, odd job for the chance to get more bells. She has extremely fine bell control. Um, and that seems to have something to do with her religion or her God. Um, she's not particularly clear about that, but then she's not particularly clear about a lot of things. Um, she's a pretty good fighter, but when she gets hit, she usually gets hit really hard. Uh, and um, pretty much she likes everyone. And if you'll carry coin to turn it into bells for her, you're, you're, you're her best pal. Excellent. And that has been the driving force behind the uh, campaign so far. Uh, so second, we have uh, Kreva, uh, who is our mercenary sorcerer. Can you give us the rundown for yourself? Sure. So Kreva is a uh, sorcerer who only learned enough uh, sorcery to be able to make money out of this, uh, to be a mercenary selling his services to whoever pays uh, the most and having a good life. Unfortunately, uh, due to unfortunate uh, turn of events, uh, he uh, is now forced to follow uh, Bell True uh, in the quest of uh, finding bells instead of uh, making money. Uh, as a pragmatic sorcerer, uh, Kreva tries to look inconspicuous, so to not show that they can do any magic and maybe um, uh, avert the gaze of uh, other people. Uh, that's about it. Smart for a spellcaster. They are often uh, the squishy at the uh, center of the party. So that makes <laughs> sense. Um, uh, next we have, uh, and uh, I don't know if I can do justice to the full name of this character, but uh, Azarafa Karlazin Miller? Yeah, you Close? got it. <laughs> okay. Azarafa Karlazin. I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of Bob and Elvish, really. It's a very uh, common name. Yeah, it's very common. So, but he goes by Raph. Uh, his, his, his mom was the, the Elvish party, his half-elf. Uh, he absolutely handles coin uh, and is more than happy to do so for a very small fee. Uh, he also is not at all interested in blending in and wears bright red leather uh, and tends to sing a lot. Um, he's fairly charismatic. He is not a terribly good spellcaster, but he does cast bard spells. Uh, he doesn't attempt to do range at all. He's a competent swordsperson, which I think was a bit of a surprise for the NPCs last time. Uh, I, I would call it a very short surprise. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, he is, he's, he's a bit of a pop and Jay and he's out there, uh, currently really impressed with Kreva and his magical bear brushing brush, uh, which was pretty amazing. So 
the setup for all of this is that uh, this was a, a group of adventurers who are raiding Wizard's Tower trying to steal his bell. Um, uh, the wizard caught them in mid-heist, uh, uh, and they were forced to run and jump through some portals, and the group got separated. Uh, and uh, part of the group uh, was uh, able to um, uh, find their way to uh, the, the, a reservoir where they dealt with some undead, and then they met some giant beaver uh, project managers who were running a dam uh, and who were upset about the, the rye bread, um, and that was a, a whole thing. And uh, they were given directions. Uh, they were told that they were in the slumbering Ursine dunes, these great 200, 300 foot red sand dunes, an area on the edge of the wilds where, where civilization bleeds into wilderness and uh, a, a, a place of, of high strangeness. And uh, they then found out that the master of the dunes is named Medved. He's a little god uh, of the wilds out here. And uh, uh, he is a god of sort of the bears and the werebears uh, that are out in this region. And they found out that his tower uh, that lies uh, uh, along the uh, uh, ocean has a bell in it. And so they set off that way. Uh, I don't know if they were intending to steal from a god, but fair enough. Um, uh, they ran into two other members of their party um, and uh, uh, during an ambush by these things called the Eld. The Eld are elves from another dimension. They're awful. They're, they're, their culture is xenophobic and uh, hateful. Uh, and uh, uh, nasty, they they abhor all other peoples. Uh, their culture is is reprehensible, and they're certainly here for no good. Um, they were am there was an ambush that they were able to deal with. Uh, their gnome was struck by an arrow and knocked out, um, and they've got the gnome in a papoose uh, somewhere. But uh, the we're gonna the the gnome uh, uh, and is uh, sort of going to be off to the the side as it were so that's uh 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 Udain, our cleric is uh, currently carrying uh the the gnome so that's npcs there in any case they made their way along they spotted uh some some things and eventually they uh found themselves at a an amphitheater out in the dunes that was populated by these various uh, slavic werebears um got a picture of that in in roll 20 we had uh some interactions with them and they were able to strike a, a, an alliance with these bears because they presented themselves as bear brushers because in the very first session they had found a magical brush uh for animals uh so they were able to use that uh, to brush the bears and convince them that they were, uh, in fact, professional bear brushers and uh, worthy of being taken to see Medved, uh, their god. And along the way, as they were being taken to the the uh, sort of the the golden glowing temple, uh, they were told that uh, Medved was having some problems, that the Eld had taken over the upper parts of Medved's tower. Um, had had put a sigil that kept away powerful people like Medved and his followers, um, and that Medved might be interested in uh, uh, hiring them to uh, uh, deal with the situation. They arrived at the tower. There was a uh, a lazy uh, old uh, uh, werebear greeter, and they went in, and the place smells as you would imagine a tower of bears and rude centaurs would smell. Um, Medved says that he runs the dunes. He has both the bears and these centaurs, and these centaurs act as toll collectors, and they're kind of jerks. Um, rude, I believe, is what the what the beavers uh, repeatedly called them. Um, so that is what we're going to be taking up, is with the group being presented and brought to speak with Medved, um, uh, probably waking him up, um, uh, you have to, to 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 get through here, and we'll we'll talk about what that looks like. But Stephen, um, let's talk about 
your character, your mentalist. Um, do you have a name for us? Uh, he's called Simon. Okay. Um, let's see. I guess he was a he he was part of a, a group of group escorting a group of caravan cards escort, escorting a caravan through the dunes. They were attacked by some raiders, and he he was knocked out during the fight. He woke up sometime later. The the caravan was gone. The raiders were gone. He's not sure why he was left behind, but he sort of reached out for the closest mines and wandered in that direction and found himself at the tower. So I guess he's also being brought before Medved. Yeah, they're, they're, so you three are our warrior monk and uh, 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 Kreva, our sorcerer, and Raph. We'll see that. Again, as you come in, uh, there are bears sleeping in armor all around. All of them have their precious pole arms. They all use halberds and things like that. Um, uh, they're asleep. There's that smell of bear. If you've ever been to the zoo and you've seen the, the polar bears sleeping around, that's what they look like. There are, are tipped over pots of honey and mead all around. Everything is kind of sticky and dirty around in here. Um, and you will see that there is a person there with another one of these bears it has a look of maybe he's been waiting for a bit. Um, so describe what Simon looks like. Um, he's about six feet tall, pretty thin and wiry. He's got sandy hair. Uh, he's where he's wearing uh, light light chain mail, and he's got he's got a tabard. On. On with uh, with the symbol of a, of a freelance guard on it. He looks more professional than all three of you um, in uh, many ways. I would like to point out that I am extremely professional looking. It just matters what profession you're referring to. Fair enough. Right. right. I look more competent than I am. Uh, and the, the bear that's escorting Simon and the bear that brought you in, they will stop and they will start having uh, a an ursine conversation uh, of growls and stuff, ignoring you uh, so you can introduce yourselves while, while that exchange is going on. There's an awkward so we don't silence. Already, <laughs> we, don't, we, we don't already know the mentalist, right? That is correct. All right. Medved, you look very different than I expected. <laughs> uh, the, no, not, I'm, I'm here to meet Medved as well. Oh. Are you also lost oh. in the dunes? Uh, well, we don't know where we are, but that's not really so much lost as the beginning of a great adventure. Ah. Uh, where I come from, we call that being lost. <laughs> You must come from a very boring place. It is lovely to meet you, though. I am the bard known as Raph. Beside me here, you see the fantastic warrior known from all the lands as Beltrue. And a person who is absolutely not the sorcerer that you might suspect he is, Kreva the Bear Brusher. I see. Well, my name is Simon. I am very pleased to meet you. All is right, this method really a god, or do they just call him one? The bears seem to like him. And I am disinclined to argue with them, as they are quite big. That's true. I, I found that it is rarely wise to question whether somebody act. If somebody calls themselves a god, I generally do not quarrel with them. I especially don't if they have an army of bear soldiers. Uh, however, uh, he... Our understanding is that we can possibly do him something of a service, and we are hoping for a compensation. Uh, we could always use an extra hand in that, I think, especially if that hand can operate coinage other than bells. Uh, but the understanding is that apparently the upper levels of the tower are, are lost to him because the horrible, wretched creatures known as the Eld are currently occupying it. They are as unto very tall roaches who might stab you. And they're more powerful than a god. And he wants us to fight them. Well, they locked them out. Well, he hasn't asked us to. Honestly, we were planning on offering it. Uh, 
Yeah. We met a few out in the dunes. I'm sure it won't be a problem. Well, you certainly do not back for confidence. I Never. like that. Uh, and oh, go on. I was just gonna say, well, the elf did die pretty easy. That's always a good quality in an opponent. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even have to do anything for three rounds. While yeah. they're discussing things, I would like to look around at the tower, like how tall it is, what is it made from, you know, try to try to get some, you know, understanding what this, you know, what, what the so construction it, is. Uh, it's that sort of a uh, weird stone that is semi-translucent. There's lots of shells and things that have been uh, uh, constructed into the walls themselves. It's a weird kind of light that comes off of it. Um, uh, the, the rooms in here are, are large. Um, they have a very, like, the place looks like it's clearly magically constructed, but not by anybody with a lot of imagination. Um, uh, so the, the rooms are kind of large. There are, are, are spaces the bears go around. Maybe it used to be magnificent at one time. There's lots of tapestries that are kind of, of uh, dirty and half hung uh, around. The tower itself has a, this large, you know, 20 foot ceiling level. Um, and then from outside, you saw that there were uh, at least two more levels and then uh, an open facing tower at the top um, uh, with a kind of a shimmer to it. And you would have seen the outline of a bell up there. So was it total height? So that, that would be about, uh, so 10, 20, that would be, that last level would, would be about 80 feet at the top. Okay. That's cool. <clears throat> so another question, the elves sure. are at the top. I, I would like to inquire the bear. How do they feed themselves if they are locked up there? Uh, so you kind of turn to, uh, and you, as you kind of turn to ask the bear, you'll see that the bear that you brought that looks amazing because of the brushing that you give him, uh, you would have noticed this, Simon. All the other bears in here are kind of filthy. The bear that they had lead them in is, is gorgeous and lustrous fur. And all the other bears are kind of standing around asking about that. And he finally goes, do, 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 do. Come on, just chill, chill, chill. And uh, he'll gesture for the other ones. He'll go, uh, you have to ask him, Edved, about that. Uh, let's go see him, okay? And uh, he'll, you know, waves waves forward the, the, the four of you and kind of uh, goes through, kind of pounds on a door and then throws it open. And you will see this large chamber. Um, and it is insanely cluttered. Um, it is packed wall to wall with the flotsam and jetsam of the ages. Um, there are divans and couches and uh, mahogany chairs and chest benches and carved ivory screens and uh, beautifully painted things and uh, stacks of uh, uh, like 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 scroll work and uh, uh, books and papers and everything, all of it in just a mess. Um, and you can see there are coins uh, spilling out from various places around in there. Mil uh, you know, you'll see some glittering of uh, gems from maybe underneath these mildewed cushions. And uh, uh, I mean, it's just filled. There are wagon loads of stuff here. Um, and when you come in, you'll see this enormous uh hairy guy kind of you know just enough clothes to you know say hey he might be civilized you know like the loincloth um got big big shaggy hair big shaggy beard hair all over him and he's sleeping on this you know pile of pillows and you'll see this uh uh wear bear uh, clearly his consort asleep next to him uh, with that sort of bear, you know, going on. And uh, this guy, hairy guy, sits up. Uh, and uh, the bear's like, well, oh, I've got a 
Ah. Uh -uh. So. So how are things in human parts? Yes, you four. <laughs> <laughs> Presuming no, no one tries to talk before Raph, Raph will immediately start rambling. Uh, hey, Medved, we have heard of your fame far and wide, and we have come. We have come from those distant human parts to attempt to assist you with this tragic situation wherein the Eld have have taken what was once a mighty tower and shunted you down to the base. They have taken what whoa, once whoa, 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 down. Whoa, 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 yes. whoa, whoa, glam shoes. Look. <laughs> now, uh, th th there, was, there, was a, there was a thing that happened. People weren't watching closely, and the Eld were able to set up a... Uh, a blockage, so my people can't go upstairs. It's not a, it's 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 a temporary thing. I just haven't turned my attention to it Bad uh, enough. because you know I, I've got better things to do. And he'll stick his hand in this big pot of honey and it kind of pulls it out. And... So, so it's a good happenstance that uh, you four happened along uh, because you know that's a thing you could do. You could go and take care of these eld for me. Well, you've talked us into it. We will do that for for. Oh golly, what's an appropriate treasure? What what could be, what could satisfy that duty? I, you know, I've heard you yeah, have a spell. Uh, wait, what? We happen to to be in the market for a bell, and and we would happily clear out your tower for that low low price. You don't want coin. I'll take coin too. Well, the bell, we don't use the bell. Excellent. We just shout. So we haven't had to use that. We will plan on taking the bell, cleaning the eld, and robbing them blind. Okay. Yep. You also have coin because you seem to have a lot of honey. I haven't seen. Uh, there's a few coins down here. I don't know if you want to give it to us. Uh, that we'll certainly take that also. Well, well, uh, w we can talk about that after you've uh, dealt with the Eld. How does that sound? Fair enough. Uh, all, uh, all, all th going to be a bigger deal. <laughs> uh, you, you three, good with that? Other three? Best to discuss the terms before, after the leverage. On our side, <clears throat> I'm not telling it very loud. Just you know, okay. <laughs> you know our leverage decreases significantly. If you know when you want to negotiate after we, you know, remove the elves. <clears throat> Just saying. Depends that kind of one. stands up, stretches while you're doing that. Again, he's like eight feet tall, hairy. He's unnatural. You can tell that he is not quite of this world. Um, and you see him start rooting around uh, uh, in and amongst uh, the uh, uh, cushions nearby, like he's he's hunting around for something. Yeah, definitely our leverage goes down <clears throat> if he decides to renegotiate afterwards. <clears throat> we could argue for as much as you want to argue for right now. I mean, I, w I rolled with the bell on the basis that that's why you guys were initially coming here. But I am happy to ask for as much he's willing to give us. Well, it would just be handy so you could have some coin to walk around with. And Simon as well, if he'll be helping us. Sure. She sort of nods at you. As long as I... The, I mean, the main thing I'm concerned about is getting getting across the dunes to some kind of civilization. So All right. I mean, as long so, as we can get some supplies... Uh, and, uh, and a few coins, I'm fine. All right, so some amount of coin per eld, the bell, and transportation out of the freaking desert. Sound about right? All right, that's our uh, that's our that's our bid. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, I've got this uh, uh, pretty valuable uh, scroll of uh, Hyperborean erotica. I'll throw that in too. All I right. read it a lot, so you know I'll put it over here with the. We'll get like a bucket of of coin for you, the stuff that the centaurs bring in. I'll just put it in with that. Sounds good. Okay, now you got to uh, clear all the eld out, though. 
All right. Uh, and he arranged, like, do we have an idea how many eld we're talking here? I don't know how many up there. They come flying back and forth in their little bubble ships. Right. So a way to pop the bubble ships would be good. Yeah, we're not big into ranged attacks. Oh. How often do they come and go? Uh, he looks around like, like, like he wants to say, and you see the bear go, <laughs> and maybe it goes like twice a day. Okay. How All right, well, you have my, my blessing, uh, my, my, my uh, uh, really well, chief, well-groomed uh, associate here will uh, 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 t take you over to the, the stairs where the glyph is that's keeping me from going up. Yeah, yeah. If we can, if we can also clear clear the gif, then once we've cleared out the ones that are there, you should be able to do the job yourself from that point. Yes, I believe it's pronounced GIF. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, the the bear who who. Uh, uh, brought you in before and initially will we'll kind of move to, to gather you along and he kind of leans in and he goes uh, we should probably get moving because uh, uh, if you stand here long enough he'll start t t telling you stories and uh, like th it's, it'll be a while so if you guys want to get this done probably want to get moving lead the way my hero suit companion I say thanks you're a true friend and uh, uh, he will walk you through. Uh, there are other rooms in here. Again, it's filled with bric-a-brac stuff collected. This this tower has clearly been here for ages, and the bears and stuff and the dunes. Things have just kind of come here. Things that like probably washed up on the shore from shipwrecks and donations, and the maybe the the bits and pieces of fallen civilizations all kind of stacked around in this place. Um, and then he walks you through this horrible kitchen, uh, uh, just smoke fires. It's not very well ventilated. You'll see these cave dwarves seem to be cooking in here. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it just does not smell good. Um, uh, you almost have to walk carefully because of the accumulated grease on the floor. If this makes it into the song later, it's all going to be steam traps and grease pits threatening our very lives. Takes you to the set of stairs that uh, go up and then bank around and continue on. And the bear will say, uh, at the landing is the glyph that the Eld put. Um, and none of us have been able to pass by it. It is keyed to Medved and his followers. So a question, do you happen uh, to have a map of the, you know, the rooms upstairs? A plan, you know, of the offices? Uh, so, like, I haven't been up there in a long time. I think, like, the, the first level, there's, like, four rooms. And there's doors to each other. And then... And then there's a there's a big ladder going up to the next one, and there's just like one room, and then up to the bell tower. Okay, how big are those rooms roughly? I'm guessing they're about one quarter the size of the tower. It's just the radius. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you see the bear kind of try to do calculations in its head. Like it's really trying to to figure it out, and says, "Well, I would say that the second floor is is about eighty by eighty feet. So maybe the rooms are forty by forty. Does that seem right? Okay. Okay. Yes. So." The question now is, <clears throat> I have like, my, my proposal is that maybe um, like those elves, like they can shoot us or they can stab us. 
ideally they would wouldn't be able to do either. So maybe we could um, just remove them, sort of like cockroaches, with uh, removing you know the the breathing material in those rooms. Unless a bell or, or a Rav would prefer to, to storm the room, then go for it. But we can I'm okay charge. with storming after, because I've seen you do this trick before. It's really clever. They just fall over. Yeah, the last time, unfortunately, they were shooting at me. But yeah. this time, maybe we could you know, wait at the door and then remove the oxygen from the room and then wait a bit until we hear things falling on the ground and then storm it. That does sound like a possible way to handle it. Provided, of course, they need whatever it is that you're taking out of the air. That's, that's a fair point. The only problem is I'm not sure what it rhymes with vacuum, but I'm willing to risk it. Oh, don't worry. The, this spell is called deoxygenation, so you can try to look for rhymes with this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that is a truly epic feat worthy of my skills. I so Black Plume rhymes with Jack Vacuum. So. Oh, excellent. I'll write that down. Uh, to remind the spellcasters, uh, the system works like this. is Generally, you prepare for one round, you cast in the following round, and there's a spell casting roll when you do that. You can cast faster. You do. You make your roll at a minus 25. You don't want to then roll like a 26 or below for your spell casting roll. You have a number of power points for your spells. Those should be all reset by this point. And each spell costs as many points as its level. So a level four spell costs four points. I am not sure how many I'm supposed to have. I think it should be 10. I have five written down, and I know that's too low. Yeah, I think you have 10. Yeah, I believe that is right. So uh, what's, what's the sort of the order that you guys move up these stairs? Well, I'll go ahead and listen Okay. at the doors. Um, I mean, first we have to see if we can get through the glyphs. They said that it was uh, keeping out the uh, Medved and his followers, but we got to see if we uh, can still get through. Okay. Beltru, let's, since you're kind of taking the lead on this, let's have you make a stalk and hide roll. Oh, all right. Hmm, maybe I should discuss that a little bit more. Okay. That's about to say, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at stalk and hide, even though I don't try to. Not bad. An 88. Yes. 88. Um, so you're moving up slowly, cautiously. Um, you will... Uh, uh, so where are you positioning yourself in the, the mix, Simon? Um, I'll be... I guess I'll be right behind Beltro. Okay. And uh, uh, who's sort of at the back then of the, the four of you? Probably, probably me. Okay. Yeah, it's probably Kreva. <laughs> okay. So uh, you will move up to this landing, and there is this Eld glyph. And it's clearly an Eld magical glyph. But it actually looks like faintly obscene. Uh, like that's just how their magic works and, and just horrible. And you kind of don't want to look at it for too long. Um, but you'll move, step onto the, the landing and kind of move past it. And it doesn't seem to affect you. Excellent. So I have a question. What is this yes. glyph on? It is on the wall itself. On the wall itself. And are those bricks or is it like a... You know, uh... 
it's continues. some kind of clearly magical stone that's clearly been uh, uh the whole thing has that radiance of magic so uh it seems to be made of that same structure that the the building itself is made of so i'm curious would i be able to for example um try to uh, erode this area where the glyph is and make the glyph disappear? You could certainly uh, try that. Um, there are two things to be considering in that. One is uh, whether that will cause some effect from the glyph. And two is that this this material is sort of a part of this magical tower, but you could certainly try it. Okay, I'm good for now. Okay, that's extra credit coins. Um, so so we... you can make your way up, and. There's another set of stairs, and you can see that there is a trap door that is actually open um, uh, to the, the room that's up there. Mm. Well, then I will move over there quietly and see if I can hear anything up there in that first room, just right near the trap door. So... Let me have you make a perception roll to see how much information you get. Okay. We're assuming you're still quiet. You're not raising any kind of alarm. Nobody's making too much noise. But stock and hide again? Nope, this will be your perception roll. Oh, awesome. Because I completely forgot what you said right after you said it. All right. Fair enough. This, this seems to be a, a, a key point in our marriage. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Why so many things are peaceable. So uh, it was the same score. Um, I rolled fine. Um, you're hearing a, like a humming. That seems to be the primary thing. This, this humming sound from in there that's kind of loud. Um, uh, it's kind of unnatural. Um, and that, that makes it hard to, to hear, hear what, what else is going on in there. Hmm. All right. I think... <sighs> And I kind of look back at Kevin and I go, I'm going to take a peek. She sort of points to, to her eyes, you know, even though she's, it's, 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 so she kind of goes up the ladder really carefully to take a look up there, like from an angle down below all around. Now this is going to be a stalk and hide roll. Okay. You're just going to keep on making me roll, aren't you? It's called roll, roll, roll till you die. Yes. Eighty-seven. So, you will get up at uh, at an angle, and uh, I assume the other kind of moving up into position. And you can see that this is again, it's a large room. It's a forty by forty room. It's twenty foot high ceilings, uh, so pretty large. Um, what you see at the angle is there are clearly these two large, uh, like steel boxes, in the center of the room. Um, they're like about 15 feet tall. They almost reach the ceiling. Um, and that, those two things, those sort of steel columns seem to be what's making the humming. They look, they don't look like they match the, uh, the materials around here. So they're clearly not of the original construction. But, uh, as you're doing that, uh, you will see that there is at least one eld guard that's in there and see some motion where you're at and it's starting to walk this way oh really yeah uh, then i'll kind of lean so that he has to come quite a ways over and when he's leaning over i'll grab him okay uh so uh, are you indicating to the rest of your companions that you're about to take aggressive action against the potential guards in the room? Oh yeah, you can tell because she like curls her uh, her feet around, you know, her toes around the rungs and 
leans down to spring. She looks like she's got a plan, so you know something's happening. She goes, shh, shh, shh. Uh, I'm going to take out my loot and turn the tuning pigs, by which I mean I am preparing a spell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that way I won't have to fast cast that sucker later. Okay. Uh, I'm getting ready to cast a spell as well. Okay. I'm just going to take yeah, up my sword. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. So uh, Sherry? I'll prepare. Do I have to say what I'm preparing, or do I just say I'm preparing? Uh, no, uh, 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 just, just say you're preparing. Okay. So, Sherry, this is going to be a sweep attack. You're going to have a bonus. What rank are you working at this with? I, I think two, because I'm going for an effect, so I'm not... Yeah, two. Okay. So let me have you roll your offensive bonus for this attack. Essentially, the surprise sweep attack on this Eld. Okay. Again, that oh, I open ended. After a look to them. Damn. <laughs> I just open ended. Okay. Um, so it's 178 plus 67. So five, 245. Yeah. Okay. Um, 245. So you're going to do, uh, two crits to him. Okay. Uh, so let's have you roll your first martial art crit on him. This with the sweeps. Is that a 48? Yes. The first one's a 48 and the other one's a 50. So just two of the same thing. Okay. Um, Quick succession. So you hit him, uh, and you do knock him down, and he is stunned. Um, and with the, 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 the significant result of that, do you want to pull him out into the stairwell? Oh, yes. That is exactly okay. what I'm going to do, is just pull him down there so everyone can stomp on him. Yeah. So uh, you three will see her uh, just pop up like a jack-in-the-box, grab this person and fling down the stairs this eld elvish warrior the soldier in armor um comes uh, uh sailing down uh the stairs uh i believe that you were the second person uh uh there simon so what are you doing i guess as, as he comes as, as he comes sailing past i'll hit him with a shock spell okay nice that is is awesome. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to make a simple casting roll. Uh, basically, roll a d100 percentile. Okay. Is there is the, is there any plus to that, or just a plain plain 100? It is just a, a plain 100. Okay, 91. 91. Um, so. You know what? That's a good roll. I'll let you use that for the A shock critical on him. How about that? Okay. So I will look at that table here, Ricky. Um, so as he comes flying by, comes tumbling down, you let loose with this uh, uh, bolt. Um, how do you imagine that that looks, this uh, uh, electricity? Is it is it like force lightning or something from your head? How do you imagine that? I'm uh, just a, a spark flying from the palm of palm of my hand to him. It's a it's a bright bright flash, and there's there's a soft cracking sound as it hits him. Okay, it, and it hits him right in the 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 hip, and he gets flung against the wall, and he looks even more stunned. Um, the 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 shock of that seems. I mean, he's kind of spasming now from that hit. Um, uh, and kind of tumbling down, uh, uh, probably making a, a little, quite a bit of noise there from his, oh, God. But it's more eldish curses than anything. Uh, so what about uh, you, uh, Raph? Uh, so currently this is the only guy that we've got, right, coming towards us? Uh, well, the, yeah, he's, well, and by coming towards you, I mean rolling down the stairs past yep. you. Yeah. Uh, so... None of my spells are especially damaging. Uh, I think actually what happens is 
Raph actually just pulls his uh, loot and himself against the stage. Like, oh, sucks to be you, <laughs> <laughs> because I am I am aware that our sorcerer is waiting right there with a blade in, out, and the guy just got beat by the monk, zapped full of lightning. So. Honestly, I'm going to let him roll by and attempt to not to have him leave any char marks on my beautiful armor. Perfect. You keep your spell uh, pre preparation going. Uh, so we come to our sorcerer. Um, what are you doing, uh, uh, oh, sorceress? Grant? He is this eld is severely stunned and on the ground. I'm, I will stop his, his, you know, his tumble down with, with my sword. Okay. Stick okay. it in one place. So. Let's have you make a, a simple attack roll with your broadsword. Just don't fumble. Uh, <clears throat> oh, boy. 134. Oh, yeah. That will definitely uh, go into him. He is stunned. Uh, so let's have you roll your E slash. 20. 20. And that's another that many points. Uh, that will take him out just on sheer hits. Essentially, as he comes rolling by, you kind of <coughs> glork. Uh, stab at him, uh, and uh, he slides down, tumbles down the, the rest of the stairs. Um, so, uh, uh, Beltru, you hear this, there's this hump, throw, boom, boom, ah! and you hear other movement in the room. Uh, so let's come back up to the top of the round, and let's start with you. You are muted, though, so describing your action right now won't help. That fills me with sadness. Uh, from which direction are they coming? Uh, they're you're uh, at that you know the doorway mm -hmm. in the floor to go up uh, into this. The, I mean the stairs end and it's that sort of trap door that's open. Uh, there are clearly a couple more of these guardsmen in the room that are moving over this way. Um, and their friend go and heard all this noise. Yeah, I know. Like he just <laughs> fell over, right? Um, well, so well, there's a crackle of energy <laughs> in the stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, essentially, I'm just waiting for one of them to get close enough. And I'm going to pull him down again, too. Okay. Um, then I think uh, we're actually going to roll initiative here. Okay. That's um, 2d10. 2d10 plus the initiative number that is listed on your bio page. Oh, man. What'd you get, Sherry? Well, um, oops, sorry. Oh, I got 23. Holy smokes. I okay. open-ended. No, <laughs> I rolled two tens, though. Uh, that. Uh, Simon, what'd you get for initiative? Looks like a four. Yes. Jason. Sorry, I forgot I was Simon. Oh, okay. No, that's okay. First yes. Action, always. Yes. Always hard. Uh, so, Belcher, you do have initiative. You see these two eld in armor uh, move up cautiously. They've got blades out, uh, you know, the thin, wicked uh, sabers that they have. Um, and you see they, they move up to... to they're not, they're moving up just to see what's happening. Um, so they're trying not to get close enough to, to, you know, to have anything fire out at them. So um, what do you want to do? I guess, I guess it is a thing of uh, sweeps. I got to see if I can sweep another one down here, right? Yeah. So, so you kind of have, have to pop out and, and, and sweep one of them. Mm -hmm. I try to pop up. You know, essentially grab one by the shoulders and roll back in. Okay. Let's have you make that sweeps attack roll here. Uh, oh, DB is a 30. Okay, I've taken the, th the 30 out of my roll. Okay. So I got a 93 on 93. sweeps. Uh, so you're going to get an A sweep critical. Okay. All right. Still do it if I can roll well. 
Ah, oh, 15. Boo! So you go to do that, kind of pop up and grab him, and you get a hold of his leg, and you kind of jerk at it, but he's braced really well. Um, uh, and uh, so he, you're not going to get him down the, the stairwell. Okay. Um, so I'm essentially in combat at this point. I am engaged, yes. so to speak. Okay. That is true. Uh, and this Kreva. is what I say. Dang it. <laughs> Kreva, she's tried to go up and grab one of the two, and she's kind of exposed herself, but she hasn't knocked him down. What do you want to do? Well, I'm going to vacuum. Okay. So you're going to fast cast vacuum now? Yeah. Okay. We need to help, help her. All right. So go ahead and make that casting roll. Okay. Ooh, it's a 10. Do you have a hero point left? I think I do have two. Okay. Do you want to spend that to reroll? I was always curious what happens in this situation. Do I go like and we roll on the spell fumble chart. Okay. And like can you tell me like was like was the worst that can happen and like was there like the, the best that can happen? Let's see here if I can pull that. I was always curious, you know, like before I spend this this hero point. Like. I think that is a fair question on your part there. Um so this is an attack spell. Um so like the lowest thing is that you lose the spell. It kind of breaks your concentration. Um the highest thing without it going open-ended, would be uh, caster internalizes spell, takes 20 hits, knocked out for 12 hours. Okay. Let's, let's use that, that fate point. Okay. It's pretty bad. <laughs> okay. 20. So I'm going to use the last uh, fate point. Uh, nice. Let's see. Die. Oh, boy. I tell you what, because I have a generous GM. I will say that you've used your last fate point, but the four that you rolled, that is the spell fumble that you rolled. So all you do is lose your concentration, but you've burnt out your spell points. Okay. Your hero points, rather. Hero points. Um, how's that for being generous? That sounds extremely generous. Thank you. Just uh, kind of don't get it. Okay. That's not going as well as you guys hoped. Raph. Oh, hey. Uh, all right. So we got this guy that's currently fighting with Beltru, and that's pretty much all I can see, right? Uh, well, it's actually, you can tell that there's another one up there. Yeah, but I can't see right. him, right? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Huh. Oddly enough, I don't seem to have to see him. So I'm going to hit him with a stun song. Stun song. Okay. Because he has to hear me. That's true. So... Uh -huh. So you roll a D100 for your casting roll. Yep. Let's see how that goes. And... Man, we are having no luck tonight. It does now, go I'm off. Not, I'm not fast casting, though. So No, so it, it will go off. It's just that he has a much higher chance to resist. Um... You know what? I got all these points. They're, they're, what, you're losing they're money not that spending I use them. them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Plus, it's the last game. and Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. <laughs> Hero points are the worst. <laughs> well, I'm going to save that the other two for now. So you kind of uh, do that and kind of strum um, and... Uh, the elves seem to have some resistance, and it doesn't doesn't affect them. Um, however, uh, my God, they're tone deaf. Yeah. Um, the two eld, since uh, uh, you're up there, Sherry, uh, they're both going to stab at you. Coolio, Coolio. Uh, you are a warrior monk, which means it's very hard to hit you. Um, what is your defensive bonus? Seventy-eight. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and your armor type is one, correct? That's correct. 
Okay, uh, so that misses. First one swings and you dodge out of the way of that. Second one also swings and has as much uh, luck as you guys have had. And uh, they both, both, you know, go to stab at you with these swords um, and, and don't connect. You're moving too fast around them. Uh, Simon, it is your action. Okay, I'm going to try to sweep one of them and knock him down. Knock him down. Okay, kind of hop up there alongside uh, uh, Valtru and do that. Let's have you make that roll with your sweep value. Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Um. One of the nice things about sweeps and throws is it hits at, at low numbers. doesn't do all that much, but uh, you do do some hits. Go ahead and roll your you roll just a straight percentile die to see what your critical result is. 91. Um, so you pop up, uh, you grab this guy, and you fling him down right on his face. Um, and uh, it, you see his nose give way. Uh, as you do that. Um, and he's sort of laying on the ground, grasping onto his nose. Blood is raining down at his face. He is stunned and uh, staggered from that as you have crushed an eldish nose. Um, uh, and he's he's trying to get his, his act together, but cannot. Um, we wrap around to the top of the round. Beltru. I say, brilliant. And I give this other guy a I probably will switch to strikes at this point. Okay. Okay. Rank two? Yeah. Okay. Roll. Uh, DB is 30. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I closed my sheet, so now I've lost all my stats. What? I know. Ah, 78. I kind of knew that, but I didn't want to be a big cheaty person. Oh, God, that was a horrible roll. <laughs> it was. You know, you have hero points. Uh, I don't need them, though. Okay. You do a 5A strikes critical. So go ahead okay. and roll your strikes. Ninety-two. Okay. Um, so uh, you saw Simon popped up, did a martial arts thing, threw the first guy to the floor, and you will strike out, and you're doing like a sword uh, uh, fist to the uh, leg, um, and uh, you hit the the sort of the nerve cluster there, um, and he is stunned and unable to parry for two rounds, essentially as his leg gets locked and he's staggering back away from you. Okay, and this was the other guy. Awesome, perfect, perfect. And I go, yes. oh, he's completely open, guys. Kreva. Well, um, let's let's try again. Okay. <clears throat> Vacuum or sword, what are you doing? Sword. Oh, I'm not getting, going anywhere close this this opening. That's, Fair that enough. Would be, that would be a suicide, but... I have to help, so you know. So I'm, I'm going with another, another okay. vacuum. Make a casting roll. Thirty-nine. So it will go off. Uh, so go ahead and roll your uh, uh, B crush critical. Are you hitting leg guy or face guy? I was hoping since they are like near uh, near a hatch, right? They have to be fairly close. So I'm trying to you know hit it in like between them so that I can cover both of them. I would say if you had rolled better than a thirty-nine, I would give okay. you that. <laughs> I see. Got it. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, it's a two. It's oh. great. It's great. <laughs> so there's a kind of a a pop sound like a balloon giving way uh, from your your vacuum there, um, okay. and uh, it does not uh, land as well as you wanted. Raph, what about you? Well, so at this point, if I cast, I'm fast casting, right? Yes. All right. But there are two stunned uh, and unable to parry targets. Yeah, I just don't have any offensive spells. Uh, but you've can, got your blade. Can I just go ahead and stab him with my steely knife? My yeah, blade. You could, could move up uh, into the room and strike at one of them if you wanted. 
Sure. Uh, I grumble about the fact that they don't appreciate music. Uh, and since they're stunned, I'm just going to straight up stabity stab stab. Okay. Uh, leg or face? Um, let's get leg guy. Okay. Never skip leg day. That's my opinion. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so his DB will be offset by the stun. So, uh, go ahead and make that attack roll. Uh, there you go. 132. Okay. Uh, let's have you roll your D slash critical. Okay. Not too terrible. 55. Um, so uh, you jump up, and that guy's staggering back to the leg, and you'll catch him across the chest. Um, and it's a nasty wound across there, and he is, is bleeding. He's still up, um, but he's in very bad shape. Uh, uh, they spend their round being stunned. Uh, they're trying to pull back um, right now. Part of the problem they have is that that hum I mentioned is loud, so the sound doesn't carry very well out of here. Um, so they, uh, the the guy can't really move. The guy with the his broken nose is trying to kind of get up and crawl, maybe to go and get help from another room. Uh, so Simon, oh, I'm going to sweep the leg. Okay. I saw this move in the tournament once. Fair enough. Go ahead and make your sweeps and throws roll on this okay, guy. That's a, that's a one twenty nine. Yowza. Uh, so, and that's rank one. Uh, so, that's going to be 10. Okay, let's have you roll your B martial arts sweep critical. Okay, this is just a straight 100? Yep. 21. 21. Um, uh, essentially, you uh, uh, kind of do up and do some fancy footwork on him and you attach his attention. He isn't able to move back. Essentially, you hit him a little bit and you keep him from going any further back right now on this round. Um, but don't do anything like extraordinary on the effect. Um, let's wrap around to Beltru. Uh, let's see here. I guess um, I probably am going to uh, go with a nice strike on whichever one is the closest to getting out one of these doors or most capable of it. Um, there's the crawling guy and the uh, leg guy, right? So which leg one's kind probably of... Probably most likely because the uh, it looks like uh, Simon's got the other guy locked up. Then I am going to place some more hurt on the leg guy. Okay. Please go ahead and roll your martial arts strike. Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Uh, so that minus that. Well, it's a good thing he's stunned. Yay! Uh, you do an A martial arts strike critical on him. Eighty. Eighty. Um, so uh, you kick him in the arm. Uh and uh, his just arm just goes limp, uh, hits him in that, and you hear the crack as something is is sprained. Um, but that's his his sh shield arm, uh, so uh, he's still up. Uh, haven't knocked him down on concussion yet. Oh, dang it! All right, Creva. Um, okay, you're the only one on the stairs now. I'm gonna go uh, up the stairs. Then I'm gonna try to stop somebody in the vicinity. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to stab the guy uh, uh, with a broken nose, or the very badly wounded guy with a leg problem and arm problem? Uh, which one is closer to running away? Uh, it looks like. Uh, uh, they're both in very bad shape. I would say uh, this guy's arm leg guy is not getting anywhere. So the, the one with even a remote hope of getting out of here is the guy with the broken nose. The broken nose it is then. Okay. Make your attack roll. Defense bonus gets offset by that. So that goes down. That is amazing at finishing, you know, just like when all the work is done, this is like you're know, in show off, you know. 
You're the, the cleanup guy. That's, the cleanup. Uh, roll me a D puncture critical. 65. 65. Um, forearm wound. So essentially, uh, he's trying to pull back. Uh, uh, you can see that Simon's kind of gotten locked up, and uh, you catch him in the arm, uh, the, the forearm there, and, and cut along that as he's trying to get away. Uh, he's bleeding uh, uh, from that, um, and it looks like he's about to go out. Um, Raph. <laughs> you know, in many systems, we would just be like, you know what, you guys win. But no, here we get to murder them to the bitter end. Well, no, what I was going to say at this <laughs> point, is both of these guys are in very bad shape. If you want to uh, coup de gras one of them, just tell me what you do. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to just coup de gras. Um, what does Raph's coup de gras look like? Well, he's the last time he did it, he, he stabbed the guy without actually looking at him. Uh, he, is, he is actually a fairly accomplished swordsman. Uh, and, you know, he's not, he's not super okay with the way these things go because they keep on... First of all, they just got no class. They're kind of gross. They have this disgusting magic, and it's just it's it's just kind of annoying to him. So he actually normally does a uh, uh, the form thing with the sword, and then stabs them almost nonchalantly, and then wipes it against their uh, their form as they fall, so that the blood doesn't get all over his sword. Fair uh, enough. So yeah, he's disappointed, <laughs> but there you go. Yeah, uh, disappointed and let's go stab. And yeah, we're going to disappoint it, Snab, uh, the one that uh, Beltru was dealing with. Um, which which brings us to Simon. Simon, if you wish, you may finish off uh, uh, your eld opponent. Just tell me how you would do that. Yeah, I, ju I just make a lunge forward. It's like I go I go I go down on one knee. My other my other leg goes 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 like straight straight out behind me. So that's that I'm like kneeling, I'm almost flat to the ground. My hand comes down on the back of his head and I just smash him into the floor. Oh, and uh, uh, it's a it's a nasty sound. There's a the gurgle of eld curses as uh, uh, he passes away. Uh, hard to hear though of uh, that hum. Uh, well, uh, one thing is, is now we've got the thing where the deoxygenation deoxygenation might work um we with the open trap door it couldn't have but what are those humming things can we tell what their structure is or what their purpose is so uh they look uh well as it can any who people who are magic users may make a staves and wands roll if you have staves and wands Sorry, I had to run away. Did I miss okay. anything exciting? Okay, wow. I managed, I have I have a stabs and wand skill of 17, and with the bonus, I roll a 17. I have 141. And that's that's open ended, so it would go. And actually, you 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 left off the one on the one hundred, so uh, uh, it okay. wasn't quite as bad as that, Stephen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, you can take a look at this, Kravia, and uh, you'll see that these th things are humming, and in the center of them, there's like a... Uh, uh, they're really seamless. They're just uh, uh, shallow impressions, like hand impressions, uh, that are clearly for the eld, like they have the long, tapering fingers. There's like a place where you would, would put your hand in them. But... What you could tell is that these are set here to harness the ley line power of the area. Um, like as you kind of extend your senses, you can tell that there that ley lines connect all over the place to here. And this is tuning that and it seemed to be storing it. Um, they seem to be storing it for some other purpose, like they've got some project that they're working on that they're storing up the ley line power for. What are those things for the hands? You can put the hand there. What, what, what happens there? Do I know? 
Uh, you don't know. Do you want to try and put your hand there? No, but I'm going to drag one of the bodies and I'm going to put the hand of the one of the, you know, our friends, deceased ones. Okay. So you grab one of the uh, still warm eld and you drag him over and bring his hand and you put it on there. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear a whom as the box that you put the hand on powers down. Oh, yes, I, uh, gonna come. I'm going to turn it on again. I mean, if it does turn it on again. Uh, yeah, if you hit, put the hand against it again, it'll go whoom, and power back up. So are we trying to figure out what this item does? It seems to be the, a, a thing they're using to harness power for some other purpose. So the other purpose is not going to be visible from where we are. Correct. Okay. But this does mean that we want to turn these off, and this may give us an advantage. So, right. Um, well, right but yeah, right now right we need now, the noise. Right. Right now we need the noise. But yeah. yeah. Maybe turn them off later. Yep. Clear the out off this floor before we shut them down. You will hear, sort of out of the air, uh, a voice in what you will recognize as Eldish says into the room, So, I'm going to start casting this deco oxygenation at the door. To there are the two other... doors in the room going out to two other rooms. And this okay. is a good place for us to take our break. Let's take five, and uh, we'll come back, okay? Okay.
Lowell, am I right in thinking that casting and role master is pretty much always high risk, high reward situation? The reward can be undercut with a bad yeah. roll. Yeah, at, at lower levels, it's high risk, low reward. Yep, I'm noticing. Yeah, it it is the thing because we had played so much and we had 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 played at higher levels and we had really worn off the rough edges and we moved fast through levels when we did campaigns. Um, I had forgotten. I had really had rose colored glasses. I had forgotten about the spell system and how painful it could be. Um, one of the things is, is that there are all of those role master companion books and they all introduce complexity, but they also all introduce some mechanisms to ameliorate some of the BS from the, the early volumes. But, but it, it, at, at, they say, oh yeah, we, well, we can help you fix this. Oh yes, you know, if you get stunned, it's really problematic. It, it's an effect that really causes you a world of hurt. Um, so instead of changing that rule, they go, oh, well, we'll give you a new maneuver you can do called stun maneuvers. And you can make a roll for that, but there's a chance that you might make your stun worse. Um, uh, or, oh, we got fast casting rules now for magic, but uh, if you do them and fail, then there's an extraordinary spell casting failure, which means that you could like ex immolate yourself. Um, so they made a it, complex system more complex. Yeah, to fix earlier problems rather than going back to uh, to original principles to go okay what's going on here that 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 i don't think at any point they wait well what do we what's the game experience like <laughs> <laughs> it's like it really is a, a set of designers who went okay i really like having a lot of classes i like levels okay let's do these charts okay well you know initiative isn't exactly the way i want it so let's make another initiative system but one where you have action points and nice. you have 200 action points. And so each action type will cost a certain number of points and we'll count down that way. And that'll be much better. All right. There, there are literally amongst all of the role master companions, there are six different combat initiative systems that are completely incompatible with one another that they go, we could do this. It's so I've done it's it's I, such a pleasure to see something so goofy that survived for so long. <laughs> well, so like my illusion spells are interesting in that the only way that I think can they can be made useful is to use them in the weirdo ways that this group is using them because they have to be immobile and they're non-tactile. Like all of them are immobile. Yeah. Uh, which means I couldn't even make an illusion of fire. <laughs> so, although I could create the spell of fire, which is an interesting yes. thing. Uh, and even then, like, there's not a direct effect. Like, the what that's going to do is going to vary widely. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is uh, interesting in a system that's obsessed with roles that illusions seem to not. <laughs> uh, imagine that, that each of the spell lists that you have there the spells go up to level 25 and then they go in, in five level increments. So they go up to level 50 and that for each class, there are six spell lists that they could possibly have as their base list, but then they have open lists so they could get, you know, another 12 and close lists, just another 12 and, and each book added more spell lists. So crazy. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, we're in the land of, of misfit games. Um, here, uh, uh, appropriate for Christmas. I picture Rollmaster being on the Island of Misfit Toys at this point, you know, next to the Jack in the Box. <laughs> that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't work. Um, so there are two doors out of here. Uh, you've heard what sounds like like a magical intercom has gone off in here. Uh, you know, clearly trying to communicate. Um, uh, you've you've got these two columns powered back on. Uh, and so there's a door to the east and a door to the west. Sorry, there's a door to the west and a door to the east. Starting so, left and right. 
So uh, I have entertain monsters, but what are the <laughs> chances that I ha I have a, a grasp of monstrous tongues? Oh, are you saying that that you know Eldish? I'm saying I might know a little Eldish. Do you have a secondary skill slot open? I have a lot of secondary skill slots open. Okay, then, 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 just write in Eldish yep. and there's not that hear... many hours left to play in. By God, <laughs> yes. you will hear. Um, what's going on down there with the the, the pillars? Um, we're getting weird readings from the barge. Something's going on. Um, uh, uh, the commander's going to fly out to see what's happening over there right now. Something, something's going on over there. Uh, is there a intercom or something to talk back to them? You assume it's magical so that it'll just simply pick up your voice? Yeah. I'm going to respond and say, we just had a rush of energy. It all looks fine down on this end. Okay. Uh, then uh, let's have you roll uh, with right. your Eldish to, to do this convincingly. Awesome. I'm fine. We're all fine here. How are you? All right. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> it's a boring conversation anyway. Uh, 91. Uh Okay, well, so there's something going on. So, so just stand by your post. Uh, <laughs> so, so they're sending people out, or they just want us to stay here by the post. They just stay by the post. There's clearly, something else is happening right now. <laughs> I'm gonna... Roger, Roger. <laughs> Uh, and then I, I'm going to very quietly say, apparently there's a barge on the way. The captain's gone out to meet them. So we want to be really fast and cut both of those people off. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, let's, well, Creva, Simon, what are you guys doing? Um, I'm listening in at one of the other doors to see if I can hear someone in there. Okay. Hold the door. Hold the door. I won't open it. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. I'm, I'm backing her up. Okay. So at the one of the doors, kind of uh, uh, listen, kind of get the uh, your uh, hand over your ear. You're not going to hear anything at that door. Do I hear a hum, like a similar hum, and that's what's keeping me from hearing anything? No, no, okay. it doesn't sound like that. Um, All right. Uh, at the other door, you'll hear, like, voices, and then you'll hear them uh, say a familiar uh, uh, thing. Uh, you'll hear, Struthos! Um, which is the, the cry of them playing the card game Struthos. Oh. Um, and essentially, uh, it does sound like like there like there's some eld in there. You hear that sort of eldish chattering. It, it's hard to hear because of the hum, but they they are clearly playing cards in there. So, so let me get this straight. They hate everything about this world except for our card game, Struthos. Struthos is amazing. All right. <laughs> You know, if they have a good deck, that could be worth a lot of money. Yeah. Handmade decks are, are valuable. Yeah, I say, let's get them. And we'll, we'll essentially, but I look at, uh, I'm looking at Creva. I mean, for him to deoxygenate. Okay, There's some so guys gonna... in there. They're playing cards. Right. Creep at the door, and then I'm going to start slowly, without rush, casting the spell, without okay. rushing anything. All right. So here's how I think I want to do this. I'm going to have you make a spell casting roll. Okay. And uh, depending on what you roll, that's how much you're going to debilitate them uh, or or knock out some of them before before they notice, you know, or before they react. Does that sound fair? It, it does sound fair. But I understand that if they start running towards us, we can just keep holding the door and they will keep, keep you know, getting... Uh... I accept that there's another door... Uh, out of that room, you know. Yes. 
Okay. <clears throat> so 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 but 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 let us let us let us have you roll. Okay. Ah oh, 25. So kind of do that where you deoxygenate. You know, you do that slowly. So hopefully they won't notice the other people are behind you. Um and uh you'll you'll do that and eventually you'll hear like something fall like maybe one of them has passed out and uh the other uh eld you know you hear the the them shouting and uh you will hear them uh i will tell you raf they will say someone's casting magic Um, and some of them come start kicking at the door here, trying to get this open. <clears throat> uh, what do you, uh, what are you three going to do? Others. We wait. To, and when they're like really pushing and they're getting like hysterical to do it, we'll throw the door open. So they fall into us and we're going to dog pile on them. At least I'm going to dog pile on them. Right. Pile I've, on them. I've, got, I've got in a spell ready. As soon as the door opens, I'm going to, do do my lightning trick on one of them. Okay, so they will. Uh, they clearly split, and some of them come at this door. The other ones are going out the other door. But the sort of three of them hit this door, kind of do that push, and then you fall back. And these tall, elegant, long fingered eld come uh, windmilling uh, into the <laughs> to the room uh, here. Um, uh, let's start uh, with uh, Raf. What uh, with your casting here? Uh, so we've got three of them in here. There are three. They're falling into the room. Uh, it looks like from here that there are a couple that are unconscious on the floor in that room, and a couple that have gone out the other door. All right. Um. So I think what I'm going to try and do is. Uh, do I need more than a 10 foot radius for the three of them? No. No. How about for the, for the group of us, for the group of you? Cause here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have us not appear to be in the room. Uh, interesting. I look at that real quick. Um, I think that, yeah, you could, could do that, uh, with, uh, uh illusions. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I know I can do it with illusions. I was seeing if I could do it with sound and light. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just trying to be stingy with my points because I don't, don't have that many. Okay. So let's let's do that. We're gonna we're gonna try and make ourselves appear to not be in the room. Okay, make that casting roll. What could go wrong? All uh, right. I gotta learn not to say that. <laughs> Before you roll, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, basically. luckily, it's not a one or a two, so you don't fail. Yeah. Uh, so you create this uh, illusion uh, to cover yourselves um, as these three come in, so they're not immediately going to see you. Um, what do you want to do, um, Simon? Okay. Well. I think they're going. They're going to notice this soon anyway. But th that means I can get right, up, right close to one of them, zap him right in the face. All right, let's have you roll your casting roll. Okay, so it goes off, and then you're going to roll me a d100 to see what the critical result is on this. Eighty-four. Um, so the one who stumbles back past you, you lance that electricity across his back and he is stunned and unable to parry. Um, and he cries out where this electricity comes from. He, he didn't know what, what, why is that happening? Why? And, uh, we come to Beltru. What are you doing? Oh, this is such a fine opportunity. Um, let's see here. Then, uh, I think that they're 
there must be some sort of, uh, how do you say, um, there must be some like furniture or something right here by the door that I could just tip over on them as they fall, right? And then um, it's not so much that I want to hurt them with it, it's that then when that's falling, I can strike them and they will think it's the furniture. Okay, uh, I will give you a minus 25 to your strike. Okay. But uh, you can certainly, uh, uh, if you succeed, they won't realize where this is coming from. Okay. I'm trying to maintain the illusion. Go ahead and roll. Minus 25 plus 78. Just trying to do as little math as possible. Um, a 131. It comes a 121. Uh, is a 12C. Go ahead and roll your C martial arts. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Do you have any ambush? I uh, can I take that as a secondary skill? No. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. I don't know why you didn't give me some. You must not love me. Because <laughs> you got a whole bunch of other stuff, lady. Um, so uh, he, you will hit him. Uh, he is not stunned, uh, but it does like crash his leg into the chair, um, and you can see that he's going to be at a penalty. Um, and essentially takes that hit and cries out. Um, Krevia. I'm going to hit the last one, the one that didn't get uh, any love this, this round yet. Okay. I'm going to stab him with my sword. All right. Go, go ahead and roll. 123. 123. And uh, surprise negates that. So is that that? Um, uh, so that's going to be... A 17D puncture. Okay, so I roll 100 or? Yep, I roll okay. your D puncture. 99. So the, the, the last one, so the first one's like, ah, you know, got, got hit by electricity, not sure where it came from. The second one goes over the chair. Um, and the third one is a little less subtle um, because uh, essentially you uh, nail sucker in lower back, internal bleeding and shock kills foe in six rounds. Foe is down and out. Um, so just you right through the back, and uh, uh, he will drop. So here's the situation then. Um, you've got that one guy down. There are two unconscious eld in that room. There are two more out here, and there are two that have run into the other other room at uh, the other door there um so i'm going to stick with our initiative from last time but i'm going to make them last because they're surprised um just because i don't want to re-roll initiative sherry what is belcher doing gotten your surprise round what's the effect you're muted, muted. right now sherry oh and I was just saying so much genius. Um, no, I am going to I'm going to deliver a nice snappy little um, a martial arts strike to uh, simply to uh, wake them up to the situation. No, no. If <laughs> if that doesn't break the illusion, I will let it not break. But I do not know. Well, let's have you make that a uh, strikes attack. Who are you attacking? Are you attacking the the chair one um, or the the just slightly affected one? I think the chair one because I know, like I'm like right by him, so Fair enough. it just makes sense to me. Make that strike. A one twenty four. Uh, one twenty four uh, minus that, um, uh, so he's going to be at that. Uh, so that's going to be a uh, a nine a strikes on him. I roll fifty eight. Fifty eight. Um, uh, so you essentially you hit him and stun him for a round as you catch him in the the chest there. Okay. Um, so basically, what you do on that round is he's kind of tripped, took that leg one, and then you kick him in the uh, the, the chest um, and essentially render him so he's not going to be able to to do an attack on this round. Yes, that's awesome if he can't hurt anyone. Okay. Um, uh, then let's go to Raf. Muted. Yeah. No, I realized. <laughs> that Google was mocking me a moment ago. 
<laughs> what are you, a fool? Uh, so right now we've got one person that is dying of a sucking, like, stab wound in the back uh, oh, listen, on the bottom. There's one that's out, definitely. Yeah. There's one that's stunned. Uh, and Bell. Uh, yeah. Bell just did a number on the other one. And then there's a third one who's still kind of around. Uh, yeah, he got hit by that electrical, so he is is uh, uh, st- recovering from being stunned right now. Right. And then there's the other two who have already run out of the room. Yeah. So if you look in the room, it's like a literally like guard post. It's got like uh, uh, eldish, you know, hammocks and things uh, kind of set up. There are two unconscious eld who clearly fallen over from the deoxygenation. Uh, they'll be getting up eventually. The other two went out the other door. Yeah, and are kind of clearly like, moving around. Yeah, I was just saying if I could catch them before they had gone. You uh, could try. Yeah, I'm not going to run off and do that by myself. I'm, I'm pretty epic, but uh, I draw the line. Uh, so the spell actually has a minute duration. I don't have to maintain it. That's right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip over to sword and shield. Okay. Uh, and if I'm still able to strike at that point, I will. Okay, you could strike at one of the stunned ones because that'd offset the penalty for switching out weapons. All right, okay. I will do that thing. Okay, then just a straight uh, attack roll. Okay, and I'm still not really feeling a whole lot of a uh, threat, so I don't yeah, really you... feel the need to hold on to much for parry. So here we go. One eleven becomes. Which is good. One... So one hundred and eleven. Okay, so you're going to do uh, 11 points and a B puncture on this uh, fine fellow. 39. 39. Um, uh, so essentially you catch him uh, and uh, he staggers forward and he's bleeding out a little from the leg wound there where you struck him. Um, Simon, mm-hmm. what about you? Um, I'll... I will sweep the one that he just attacked and okay. see if I can. That's a 120. 120, and he's got that. He put his DB to that. Uh, so uh, go ahead and roll the 9B uh, sweeps and throws. Okay, 78. 78. Um, so uh, you catch this guy as he's coming around. Uh, uh, he's like turning to get his weapon out and you flip him down and he comes down right on his wrist. Um, and you'll hear the crack as his weapon hand gives uh, under him. And so he's on the ground uh, and his, his weapon arm uh, hand is broken and he cries out in pain. Creva. So are those two that were running in the opposite direction coming back towards us? Looks like they've got to go through that other room and come uh, around and in through the other door to this room. All right, to avoid the going through the lack of oxygen. Is that correct? Yes. Now, they could do that, or they might be actually heading upstairs. Ah, okay. So I'm going to finish the one that, you know, that's already lying and has a broken hand. Okay, since that seems to be your specialty. Awesome. <laughs> go ahead. 74. Oh. Oh. Uh, so you will will uh, just basically give him a love tap uh, for uh, a couple of points there. Essentially, go to smack at him. Um, they recover from being stunned. That's the their thing. There, one of them is out. Uh, the deoxygenated ones do not wake up yet, um, and the other two. Uh, you don't see yet. You're not sure what they've done. They've kind of vanished out of your your line of sight at this point. Um, In the distance now, uh, you'll actually hear what sounds like clearly down the shoreline, like some kind of large noise, like maybe an explosion or something is going on um, outside. You can feel that like the the place shakes a little, rumbles a little bit from, from that. Um, as as that is happening, Beltru. Um, 
I think that I'm going to uh, lay another smackdown on one of these guys. Uh, the one that looks most capable of hurting someone. Okay. Go ahead, roll your martial arts strike. This is the last round. This guy's being stunned, so you, you essentially negate his bonus. Get him before he can act. 159. 159. Okay, so that's rank two. Uh, so that's going to be a 12C. Go ahead and roll your C. Me too. Incredibly, incredibly average. 52. Uh, that's another eight hits plus two per round. So that will take him out on concussion. Yes. So there's one guy left uh, who's recovering from being stunned. Um, and let's go to Raph. Uh, he's recovering this round or he has already recovered. He is recovering this round. All right. So we've got these two unconscious people, but they're eventually going to wake up, right? Yes. All right. Can I just go in there and coup de gras them? Absolutely. Um, you will see when you do that, that you can do that. And you look and you see that that door that the other two ran out, uh, is open. And you see something big coming this way, like trundling huh. uh, into the room you're in. All right. Good to know. Okay. Good to know. Uh, then uh, let's come to Simon. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare a spell since I, since... I hear this thing. I hear this thing coming. Get ready for get ready for next round because this okay. guy, this one guy, he's practically finished. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and Kreva. So to... uh, maybe use my monster uh, knowledge to you know try to maybe like you know have some understanding of what what, what is coming. Sure. Let's have you roll. And it's plus forty. 109. The Eld sometimes use uh, magical constructs to guard places. And that's what you suspect is coming. How are they charged? I, I mean, how are they suspended in life? Do they get like charging of some kind? Uh, 109, I, I think you're not sure about the innate magical tech of them. Um, I mean, it's, it's essentially equivalent to a golem for... Uh, the the eld, um, uh, it may be partially done by the the ley lines here, but you're uncertain. Okay. okay. Uh, this guy uh, who's still in the room with you has uh, that has has uh, come out of his stun, uh, so he's going to take a strike at one of you. I have one more question. Do do yes. I decide knowing things? Can I also take an action in the front, or would me would I be thinking actively? to figure out what's happening. I assumed you would be stepping up to kind of look and see and, and, and try and hear what's going on to, to, to make the best determination there. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, Is this the guy with the, the broken wrist? Uh, yes. No, no, no. The broken wrist guy is, is already down. This is, this is a guy who was stunned in at a penalty. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, so he is going to take a swing at you. Um, Beltru, me, yes, because I have provoke. Uh, so we make that provoke roll. All right. Remember the bells. I understand. Hundred and forty-four. So he yes, you step forward name. with the bells and, <laughs> and ring it all in his face. And, and they're beautiful. Good. They're so, so melodious. It's the most hateful sound. Uh, yes, he does not care for that. Uh, so I know what your defensive bonus is. I know what their offensive bonus is. So this is a D100. Uh, so 43 against armor type 1 will not land the blow. So top of the next round. So you're in that room. You've, you've, you've put these two uh, deoxygenated L Eld out of their misery. And... You will see come rumbling into the room. Uh, where's the thing here? I'll show you the picture. I'll sh show you what it looks like. 
it's on this big wheel and uh, it's got this big pole arm thing and it comes rolling out. Um, I'm going to roll its initiative. Okay, so it's going to go then. So I'm going to start at the top of the round. Same initiative. It's going to be Beltru, uh, Krava, Raf, Construct, Simon. Bell. You're still in there with this one guy engaged with you, Malay. You don't know what's happened to the other two, Eld. And there's this construct moving in to attack Raf. Um, wow. Okay, well, yikes. Um, I think I got to drop this guy so we can turn our attention to the other one is he remains a threat. So I'm going to attempt to drop him. Okay. Quickly uh, as possible. Strikes. He's got that. So that's 101. Uh, so that'll be a 10... Sorry, 9B, and you're critical. 42. 42. Um, uh, he has to parry this round. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, we got a round without him, not, without him attacking anyway. So, Kreva, uh, Bell's engaged with one of these guys. There's still that illusion that's sort of hanging in the air of you guys not being there, uh, but you're up. Uh, there's some bodies of the Eld, uh, bodies hit, hit the floor. Uh, Roth is in the next room with unconscious Eld, and this construct is rolling in on him. What do you want to do? So what is this construct made of? Uh, looks like metal, steel, that kind of stuff. So I wonder, can I erode this kind of stuff since it's inorganic? Well, let's, let's take a, a look at your spell description here. Uh, da, 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 da. So that's going to be solid destruction. I mean, uh, there is, the, yes, erosions. I would say that uh, you could do that, and uh, I know how we'll resolve that. So, yeah, you can make that as a casting roll if you want to cast it. Uh, OK. Um, another idea, I wonder if it's possible. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if this is how it's charged. So, so here is what I will say. If you do the erosions thing, mm -hmm. uh, it will either take off some of its hit points, like it take a, a percentage of them off, um, or it'll reduce its armor type. Oh, OK, because it will, it will rust. OK, let's, let's try that. Let's see what okay. happens. Fast cast, let's have your roll. <clears throat> All right. Oh, man. 14. Can I have you? You're fast casting, right? Yeah. Can I have you roll again? Oh, man. 52. OK. Um, uh, so you're going to lose your spell points. OK. Essentially, it, 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 you bobble the spell when you go to cast it and uh, uh, cast that energy out. Raph. That thing's big. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I'm presuming it can tell I'm here despite the illusion. Like, it seems yes. like the kind of thing that gets to go right through my illusions. Uh, and that, it most of my spells, spells are probably, yeah. So my general plan here is to go nearly full parry. OK. Uh, because it's it's coming for me, and it's a giant freaking unanite. <laughs> So, um, but I, I'm still going to take a swipe at it. It's just a tentative swipe. Absolutely. Uh, we'll, say that, we'll say that I send 70 of it over to Perry, and I keep 15 to strike. Okay. Uh, and you have your shield out too, right? Yep. Okay. And that gives you plus another plus 25, so that's 95. So that's a pretty good defensive bonus. Go ahead and make your attack roll. Nope. Okay. 37. 
Uh, so you do, you kind of get that, that tentative clang to kind of judge where it's going. Um, and uh, it will uh, uh, take a swing at you. Uh, so it is rolling. What is your armor type? Not as high as I wish it was right now. Eight. Eight. Okay. So 92 on eight. So he's going to hit you for 11 points. So where does the parry come into play on that? So uh, I took 95 points off his attack bonus. All right. Good. That's to why know. I roll with a, with a five. Plus five. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So he hits me for 11 points. And I'll roll a slash. Table. Get to the chopper. Um, so that's entirely too high a roll. I'm making you re-roll it. Okay. Because <laughs> another thing you're going to tell me is going to be any good. <laughs> oh no, no, it was a uh, bleeding eight hits per round, so that's yep. probably a good call. Um, so he hits you for uh, essentially just as you dodge back, he catches you just in the the calf with that uh, pole arm, mm -hmm. and you're going to be bleeding one hit per round. Okay. Okay. Um, Simon, this thing is rushed out. It's it's stabbed at uh, Raf. Raf is you know uh, pretty good with his blade, and he's got that up, and he's paring it back. Um, uh, it looks like it has multiple limbs, so you're a little afraid of what could happen next. It's your action, Simon. Okay, I'm go I'm going to try to do do my shock spell, which I figure against a metal opponent will either be really effective or completely useless. Go ahead and make that roll. 21. Does go off. Let's have you uh, roll that critical. 93. 93 minus the, the effect of it, because it takes those. Um, so that's... Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so... You actually hit it, and uh, the sparks of this thing uh, break off some sections of it, uh, but it looks like it just kind of did concussion to it. Like, it didn't do any additional critical effect, didn't stun it, uh, or force of a change of, of face, but it did, did hit and hurt it. Um, you did about 20 points of damage to it. I come back around to the top of the round with Beltru. Beltru, uh, this thing has rolled in. It's got that the 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 pole arm. It's got another limb. It's kind of bringing up to bear. Uh, you're dealing with this guy. What do you want to do? Uh, I am. See what I want to do is throw him in front of that thing so i guess uh, but i need to finish i'll try sweeps with the intent to essentially throw him into that melee okay i will say that, that if you get the proper uh, an effective critical we'll we'll read the fiction of that as throwing him over there does that sound reasonable that sounds great okay go ahead and make that attack roll That's 12. nice. He's at that minus. Um, so you're going to do an A sweep critical. 45. 45. Oh, that seems low. You know, do you have a hero point? I, I only have, I don't know. Let me see. I have two left, and one of them I'm saving in case things go south for either I or Krava or anyone else. So, uh, so. Uh, you don't quite get the effect that you want. You do stagger him back. He has to continue to parry. Essentially, you keep bobbling him off balance. Are you parrying an adrenal as well? Uh, am I parrying adrenal? Pre preparing an adrenal. Did you oh, I should. Okay, just reminding you about that. Um, oh, hey, 
Um, okay. Yes? Uh, though, if, if someone could uh, power down that ley line thing, we can see if that'll affect this. Will do. Okay. Uh, Kareva, what do you want to do? I'm going to run to the, um, to the machines, and I'm going to use the, you know, the body that I left there when I turned okay. it off before to, you know, turn it off again. Drag, Both drag, 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 drag. Kind of turn that off, um, and you'll hear that, that power down sound. Um, Raph? Maybe see this thing moves a little bit slower. Could like, it isn't hyped up by all the ley line energy. And it's your action. I thought we had left that damn thing off, actually. <laughs> so, turn it back on to have the hum. Uh, all right. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I think I'd like to have... I want to be clear about, about the enchanted dice that I got from the Vodnich. Because if there was ever a thing I wanted to have bad luck, it is the thing that's in front of me. Uh, so my 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 impulse is to uh, is to say that I'm entirely parrying at this point. But he reaches like into his pocket and pulls out the dice. So he's like, "These are for you," <laughs> and just like fuzzy dice around the neck. All right. Um, let me have you. Roll percentiles. Well, that sounds exciting. <sighs> da, da, da. Uh, I can just roll it as the D hundred, I guess. Yeah. All right. Eighty-five. Eighty-five. So you do that, and it tries to. Uh, 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 kind of knock your hand away as you drop the die, like fuzzy dice around its thing. And uh, the pole arm goes up and like jams into the ceiling and gets stuck there. Um, and essentially, uh, he can't, it can't get it out. So it has to let go of that and switch to lesser weapons. I'll take that bit of luck. Okay. Um, uh, it is going to try and smack you. Thank um, you, hideous spry zombie. <laughs> uh, your armor type eight. Yep. Uh, I'm rolling this, and I'm actually subtracting uh, ten. So I, uh, well, I, I said I'm fully parrying. Yeah, because uh, he he attacked with that, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it it sweeps out. As it kind of uh, tries to get that and lets go of that pole arm, and the other arm kind of swings around, torques around, and whiffs past you. Um, mm. You ate up one of its attacks. It was going to get two this round. Uh, so now it's just going to have to go to two arms for its actions. Simon. Okay, I'm going to sweep the one that Truebell was, was fighting. I'm going to back, back up her plan, try to drive it into the, the, the big monster and get so that they're both interfering with each other. Let's have you roll. Okay, 127. Okay, so that was bonus that. So roll your A sweep critical. 55. 55. Um, so uh, you actually, it's a, a foe, sweep drives foe back. Uh, has to parry next round. So I will say that you have both kind of been pushing on him and you push him sort of into uh, that uh, a situation with the uh, uh, with the construct. Essentially, it kind of bounces against it and it's going to eat that uh, 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 up pretty well. Sound good? Okay. So and it's, how does preparing for spells work? Can I also do that or is it one or the other? It's one or the other, generally, with okay. those kinds of actions. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing on opportunities. Yeah. No. And actually, as a mentalist, you're in pretty good shape. But your armor is is pretty high, right? Because uh, you're actually wearing chainmail, so uh, you're a little less pop, less uh, squishy. Right. Um, Beltru, 
uh, uh, looks like uh, Simon followed up on on your thing. Essentially, both sweep knocked him back uh, against this construct. This guy is just trying to to get his balance there. It's your action. Only you weren't muted. Sorry, I also had to wrestle cat. Okay, so um, essentially, I think, but th that guy still isn't down yet, right? But, but right now, he's sort of caught up. He's eating up one of the two attacks from the construct this round. Okay, so if I take adrenal speed, I can take two actions, correct? You can prepare for that this round and possibly get two actions next round. Yes, okay. Then I guess that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to essentially use my strikes to look for a place of weakness on this thing. So I guess I will use my OB, but it's a perception role in some ways. Does that make any sense? Well, you can tell that uh, some of its armor has been reduced by having that power turned off. So you could conceivably make a strike on it if you wanted to. Okay, then that's what I will try to do, especially where it's already been hit by the lightning. Okay. So, uh, so go ahead. A beautiful story I'm telling myself. And make that attack roll. All right. At 20% okay. off. So minus 20? Uh, yeah, I'll, sure. I'll do it that way. Yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> that's the way they say in the rules to do it. So. Does it, do they? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so 96 total. Oh, gee, that seems like a low roll. You know, you could spend a hero point and re-roll that. It's martial arts, so it's probably still hit and doing a, some little tiny weeny critical. So I'll take uh, it. Um, so that is going to bounce off of it because it uh, takes large crits. Okay, so I do uh, this. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> boom. Punch into it. Do that. That's Treva. not the point. <laughs> Your action. Uh, I'm going to turn off the second uh, device. Okay. Um, and when you do that, you'll hear like like something falling outside, like like maybe the sound of a sphere ship, like a crystalline <laughs> sphere ship with Eld, like, you know, falling into the ocean down below. <laughs> uh, the, that sound of, of screaming Eld as they, they watch the, the sea coming up at them. Um, <clears throat> And this construct definitely slows more. Uh, Raph. Uh, I think I'm going to have to try and stab at someone here. Um, so we've got the, the construct who has the very high armor and the guy who's been eating up one of the actions of the construct who is probably not doing that this turn, right? That, that is his action. His action on this round is, is trying to get out of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm a stab that guy. Okay. <laughs> like, like he's right there. Uh, I, I'm still keeping most of it for Perry. So I'll keep, um, golly, I, I'll, I'll, I will use 15 to try and stab this guy. Okay. Um, um and keep the for Perry. he has to parry. He's at minus 25 on the parry. He's unbalanced on that. Okay. So go ahead and roll straight up here. Not very good. You know what? I've got one more point. Yeah, why not? I don't know. What do you guys think? Ah, screw it. I'm doing it. Here that we go. Good. Last point. <laughs> okay. 88. Uh, 88. Uh, so that'll actually, uh, that'll actually go up to with the bonuses for the, the situation he's in. You get to roll the large crit for me. All right. Woohoo, large crit. All right. 50. 50. Um, so that is going to hit him for some more con uh, concussion damage. It does land uh, heavy on him, but it does not take him out. He is still Bummer. up. Um, he My is going points. to... Uh, what is your... Uh, how much did you put to parry? Uh, I left 70 for parry. Okay. Plus shield. Oh, wait, uh, you yeah, were attacking the, the, um, the goofball. You were attacking the, the eld. I'm yeah. sorry. 
So that'll take the L out. I apologize. Okay. Um, so the the body of the eld is tangled up on this construct's arm. It is going to strike out with the other arm to try and hit you, Raph, since you're the closest target. What is your defensive bonus? Get the shield for uh, 20 plus 5. And how much did you put into parry? 70. 70. Uh, okay, so he would need to roll very high. 12 is not going to do it. So it essentially tries to, to ram you against the wall uh, and fails. Simon. I am going to I'm going to prepare a spell and I'll also move in into position to sort of sh shield the other shield true bell and the others from, from from attacks because I've got a pretty good defense. Okay. Kind of move up in the way, do that concentration to prepare. Bell true. Right. I've had a chance to watch this thing moving and stuff, and I am going to um, see. I don't have weapon skills, so I pretty much have to use my. Um, but here's the thing: is is that there are some of these eld weapons that fell you know, by the unconscious ones, mm -hmm. I'm going to actually use the um, the fiction that I pick up the blades in order to, and sort of try to wedge it into its wheel seams or whatever to try to do sweeps on this thing. Okay. Does that make let's, sense? Uh, let's have you make that roll. Okay. Then I, I did adrenal speed last time, okay. so I get two times two uh, tries you have to roll to see if it goes off oh okay well then i will make a roll to see if it goes off okay so that's uh, so one four first. minus that okay let's uh do you want to resolve your adrenal or your uh crit first uh how about the crit and then we'll see if the adrenal works okay Just go ahead so and roll it keep it together come on do decently a 23 uh, so that's going to do some concussion to it. Right. Now let's see crit. if adrenal goes off. Adrenal speed. Okay. And that is... Sorry, my thing disappeared again. Okay. So I picture you up there kind of flailing, trying to grab on, trying to flip it around. Your At adrenal speed goes off. Do you want All to make right. another attack on it? Yes. Roll it. So 113, we'll do that. It does that much damage. Uh, you get uh, uh, one more bite at the large critical. Okay, let's try it. 70. 70. Uh, so this thing is kind of getting jammed up and, and pulled around. It You can tell that having those pylons off is significantly weakened it. Um, and you're kind of spinning it around. Um, and kind of, it's kind of unbalanced right now. Uh, uh, Kreva. So this guy uh, that was constant, uh, constantly parrying, is he out of the picture? Oh, he's out of the picture. Oh, he's out of the picture. OK. Uh, let me try the erosion once again at, this, at the machine. Let's have you make that casting roll. 37. So 37. Um, well, resistance. Um, so it, it erodes a little bit onto his hits, but it doesn't uh, nearly do the rusting that you wanted it to do. It's not quite as, as effective as you would like. Uh, Raf. How long do I keep losing one hit? Because I've been doing it. Uh, until you get it healed up. All right. So You can use herbs uh, for that. I, I can, but right now I've been keeping this thing busy so it doesn't kill everyone else. Uh, so let's keep doing that. Why not? Uh, I'll try and hit it with 15. Okay. Go ahead and make that roll. It's reduced down to that for armor type. Uh, 
Yeah, that's probably not going to. Yeah. No, do you have any hero points left? No. Okay. Uh, so I would. I wouldn't you, spend them there anyway. <laughs> right. You're you're bouncing the parry. I mean, you're up using most of your offensive bonus to to keep it occupied, um, uh, and it is going to take a couple of uh, swings at you, um, uh, at a significant minus. Because you've got a 95, so it's rolling at minus 25 right now uh, to hit you. So it's going to swing with uh, the two arms on you. Um, and <laughs> That's what I like to see. It's slap fighting <laughs> you, okay? That, the hands are kind of going out. It's like because of the martial arts things that have been done and the erosion, its systems are kind of off balance and the, the martial arts has spun it around. What are you doing, uh, Simon? Okay, I'm going to let off another shock spell. Okay. Make that casting roll. 76. That will go off, and then roll me the critical. 14. You have four hero points. Do you wish to re-roll that? That sounds like a good thing to re-roll. Yes. 75. I, I'm 70. happy with 75. Um, so you guys have, have put it off balance. You've kind of torn its armor open. You got that sort of rust points. You've turned off its main power. Um, and uh, you'll finally get that like last bolt of electricity will will shock and kind of run up the inside of it. And it will still like its hands trying to grab at Raph and will just kind of power down. And and collapse. Um, so uh, the elves that ran upstairs ran to take off in their bubble ship, and you essentially crashed them into the sea below. Um, uh, when you guys get up to the top of the tower, you can see that whatever magical project they were working on down the 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 shoreline, there's just this magical explosions and things going off. Uh, uh, and clearly, turning the power off here must have let something loose, and uh, it's caused some horrendous problem down there. Um, and there are no more Eld here. Um, but there is a beautiful, magnificent, ancient bell that is, is hanging from here. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's not actually metal, but it's some kind of uh, magical ceramic that's kind of got this blue marbling to it that catches the light, and um, it's actually lighter than you would expect. Um, uh, so you're going to be able to actually, you know, it's going to take a bit, but you can transport it. So um, uh, uh, what's our epilogue scene that we see with you, Beltru? Um. I think there's a sort of thing where uh, you see her and Kreva uh, going through the dunes and she has rigged up this bell on a giant long uh, essentially pole and she's carrying it over her shoulder. It's the most improbable looking thing in the whole world, but it is actually quite light. And once she had a chat with it, it's even lighter and it rings whenever she wants it to. And that's pretty much entirely her delight she has plans to make it the roof of her of her uh you know essentially put it for the roof of a new temple and and kreva what's our epilogue scene for you from this well kreva is a couple of feet be, uh, behind walking defeated this <laughs> request <laughs> it will never end and uh, uh uh what's our our epilogue bit for for raf uh, so Raph is up on a stage in a tavern where people are cheering and he's like, the 27 arms of the construct each struck out of me, but my blade was as unto lightning, pushing each away, but nevertheless it drove me back and back, its arms reaching for my very neck. And then, as if the gods had said that Raph will not die this day, they looked out and said, he is just too pretty. Lightning struck the outstretched arm of the hideous beasts, allowing me to tell you this tale today. I, I, do you have like bits of the, the construct as props for this, I assume? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got 
I've got all kinds of bits. Some I've had to sell here and there, but yes. Fair enough. And, and Simon, what's our, our epilogue bit from you? I mean, I'm sitting in the audience when he says the gods struck this thing down, and I sort of, I sort of half rise from the table. <laughs> and it's like, no, I, I just sit back down. And I mean, I've got this big purse full of, full of coins that they get, they gave me as a reward. And compared to what I was earning as a caravan guard, this is pretty good. So I'm, I'm going to stick around with these guys for a while. Makes I mean, sense. They, they seem to be pretty lucky somehow. Lucky's a good word for it, given the rolls of attack I made this round. So that was, uh, I have had consistently bad luck with my bad guys. So um, thank you guys very much. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to take just a, a couple of quick moments uh, here to do Roses and Thorns. Um uh, just a quick thing. We talk about how I ran it. We can talk about the setting. We can talk about Rollmaster. Talk about whatever you want. Um, let's start with uh, Thorns. Um, yeah, Rollmaster fights can go on. I always forget that, but they can drag out too. On top of the, the spell system, the fights can go a, a little bit longer than I care for. Uh, actually, a lot longer than I care for. Um I'm spoiled by by modern systems, uh, and it actually makes going back to these things uh, uh, much more painful. Um, so that's that's my thing. Is it uh, um, Sherry Thorns? Let's see here. Yeah, that that slog when you're trying to finish things off. Um, the um, Let's see here. The kind of crazy up and down in this. You can hit really well and yet you're critical. If it's not awesome, it's you might as well have just not been there. Um it can it can feel like that at least. Sometimes your concussion matters, but a lot of times, yeah. You gotta have double success to really deliver. Eh, it's Fair a enough. system. Uh uh Philip, uh Thorns? So actually, I think what you mentioned about the, the fights being long, uh, this time it was uh, much like, like shorter than I think than the, the last time when we were fighting in the desert oh, against right. the Elf. That one was, was pretty long. But this time, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe it was just um, like because things were changing pretty fast. Uh, I think it was like less, uh, couldn't be felt so much. Uh, okay. I definitely like the, that there is continuity between things with uh, Raf using the dice that uh, he got from a previous session, which is pretty cool that, you know, that things f flow from one uh, one game session to the other. Uh, uh, Jason Thorns? Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier. I don't dig that magic system. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, there's things that I could stand, I, 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 I'm kind of into, especially because you look up everything for me, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> But that magic system is not one of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't really like hierarchies of spells. They feel to me intrinsically unmagical. The The risk versus reward seems uneven. The fact that I have to keep track of power points on it is kind of annoying. Uh, so, so the magic system, to me, I'm like, I would either hack it or play a non-magical universe most of the time. Yeah, I... I... I think that would be the only way I would do it again would be to do super low magic or completely change, change it. Yeah. I think you're right, right on the money with that. Hmm. Uh, Steven uh, Thorns, we, we brought you in, we threw you in the deep end. I appreciate your, uh, thank you very much for coming in and sitting in the empty chair. And I, I always love playing with you. Um, but, thank but I'm going to ask you to, to critique now. Right. Well, the combat, it's, it seemed like a little one-dimensional. It's like you declared that you're doing a sweep, and then everything else that happens is just the result of these random tables. It doesn't feel like you have that much control over the yeah. combat. And yeah, like so there's, I, there's no yeah, good rules for some duel and stuff. Yeah. Right. right. I basically had two options during the, during the fight. I could do a sweep, and everything was determined by the die roll, or I could cast a spell. And so it didn't feel like I was do actually making many decisions. I think that's fair. And, and I think that, that 
You're right, especially with that class, certain certain builds. Yeah, you only got a couple of choices. Um, right. I mean, yeah, I it, do it, like I I do like the sort of character who helps other characters, who like puts your opponents at a disadvantage. It just yeah, the game doesn't do a good, very good job of supporting that role, uh, it's, and I think that's unfortunate. Um. Uh, let's do roses too quick to to finish out. Um, uh, I like the dunes. I think they're goofy and weird, and I like this point crawl. Um, uh, you know, I added stuff in, but I still like how goofy it is. And I really liked the the characters that you guys built. That that given how just uh, a big spreadsheet of numbers, you managed to make something really distinct and interesting out of those. Um, uh, and so I, I really adored that. Sherry Roses? Uh, well, of course, the other players were awesome and been very fortunate that way. Um, I, I really did like the sort of strange, strangeness of the, the dunes with, uh, essentially all of these different peoples. I mean, for a big old desert, it was sort of teeming with different kinds of people and different agendas. And that was, a, it was sort of fun to run into because not all of them were enemies. You know, some of them were just trying to get by with their life. It was lots of quirky stuff, but you know, some pretty life and death struggles going on too. So it was a lot of variety and a lot of sort of um, fun, interesting and uh, but not throw away, not throw away. Uh -huh. So a uh, very enjoyable. Uh, uh, Philip roses. I think exploration, uh, and like that, well, we were going through a dungeon and we were like basically trying to figure out what's, what's happening inside. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. I definitely enjoy when, you know, you can start figuring out, oh, what does it do? What, what is happening here? And <clears throat> I have to say that, uh, I, Definitely enjoyed that the magic here. Like I understand that uh, the, the uh, spell lists are not that great, but I'm glad that in this session I was able to use more than one spell, uh, mm -hmm. which is which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, it is a weird thing about Rollmaster is is some spell lists are so much more effective, but I, it was nice to see the the solids uh, uh, come in there. Jason roses. So. Uh, to speak to the strengths of Rollmaster, I'll be honest, there's something kind of refreshing about a system where like literally anything could happen on those crit tables. Uh, and like any given role, you don't know if you've done the most amazing thing or if you're kind of screwed. Uh, I, th I think your introduction of fate points helps even out some of the um, unfairness of that because it is ultimately mm -hmm. not going to be fair like you can be the most amazing swordsman in the world and never do more than scratch people uh but but there's a kind of appeal to the utter uncertainty of it uh i don't think it would be my cup of tea regularly <laughs> but it was it was kind of a refreshing change because when you get to the end of the day the powered by the apocalypse even though the moves have a wide berth um they're relatively restrained uh, in terms of, of mechanical effects. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it was it was it was kind of refreshing. I'm I'm glad you you dug, dug it. That's that's sort of the the vibe I wanted people to to experience. So I appreciate that, uh, Stephen. I'm going to give you last word tonight uh, with any any roses if there if there's anything that you you actually dug from the session. I actually really like the preliminary stuff with the, with the bears and the the background and all the little little background details. I thought that was really f a, f a fun situation to just jump into. Yeah, I think that's the most the medved and the bears are some of the most colorful full bits here. Um, um, and I actually wish there was more like that in the 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 dunes. Um, uh, I, I do think that's that's super super cool. Yeah, is this a prepared scenario or something you were improvising? Yeah, this is. Um, the, let me see if I've got the book here. I just had a second. So this is a point crawl uh, from the slumbering Ursine dunes, and and the the tower has the big thing with Medved and 
and how horrible they are and that the centaurs are jerks and and uh the bears um so i mean they're kind of gross but we're all right with it <laughs> well <laughs> i i mean creva kind of made them our allies right away just by being the most amazing bear brusher in the whole world it's at that point they couldn't it was we're practically impressive. allies yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. it is it is it is by far my favorite point of the of yeah. the whole thing is him with his bear brush. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you you going along on this goofy, goofy, stupid ride with me for Retro um, uh so Back to story gaming, um, and uh, uh, so Stephen, I'm so glad that you've you've jumped on the the gauntlet. I hope you'll uh, get to play with you some more. Um, I and, hope so. I hope so too. Yeah. And, and, so and Jason, I'll, I'll I'm sorry that your, your schedule's so, so weird next semester. Yeah. It's just consumes the evenings. And Philip, uh, I, I'm so glad you, you signed up. Uh, and it's such a good time. I'm, I'm glad you got off the wait list. I'm glad you played. It was the first time playing with you and, uh, had a really good time. Thank you. Um, I haven't been playing any any role playing games for like five years, so I really appreciate that. You know, I could uh, I could find a spot and uh, and play it again. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. Yeah, everyone. you were really great. great. Thank you. Yeah. So awesome. And and Sherry, uh, you're downstairs. So hi. hi. Um, <laughs> and, uh, have a great holiday, everybody. Um, uh, regardless of, of what what it is, but uh, I hope you have some some good times and uh, enjoy yourselves. And I'm going to stop the broadcast. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.